There is a surge in fear and COVID-19 cases in China. Hospitals across China have been overwhelmed by an explosion of COVID-19 cases. Reports suggest that crematoriums are lined up with dead bodies waiting to be disposed. Experts now warn that the rapid increase in COVID-19 transmissions in China could create a potential breeding ground for new variants. In the latest, China has said that it would bring an end to mandatory quarantine on arrival, prompting many people in China to make plans to travel abroad. But that has triggered a global alarm. Several countries across the world have imposed travel restrictions on Chinese travelers. To name some, Italy, Japan, India and Malaysia have already announced their measures in a bid to protect against importing new COVID variants from China. And in the latest to join this list is the United States of America that has announced that they would require negative COVID tests for all travelers from mainland China. Meanwhile, Beijing has hit out against these travel restrictions and called it hyping and politically manipulated by the West. China's foreign ministry spokesperson has further said that China's epidemic situation is all predictable and under control as of now. However, experts say that the situation is difficult to monitor due to the inaccurate reporting on cases in the country. Beijing has stopped mass testing and no longer reports asymptomatic cases. This clearly means that the official data is unlikely to be a true reflection of the situation on ground. Experts say that the situation in China is difficult to monitor due to the inaccurate reporting on cases in the country. Beijing has stopped mass testing and it no longer reports asymptomatic cases. This clearly means that the official data is unlikely to be a true reflection of the situation. And for more on this, we're now being joined by Professor Manfred Green. He's the Professor of Epidemiology from the University of Haifa. Welcome to the broadcast. Right. I want to first start by asking you that how dangerous is the situation in China currently? Yeah, it's not entirely unexpected that the after the restrictions, the very strict restrictions that were imposed in China, that we might see a situation where when they lift restrictions, if they haven't vaccinated very widely, uh, there would be outbreaks of the disease because it spreads very easily. So clearly for China, this is a major problem for the spread of the disease. Um, we still don't know how severe the disease is. Uh, the impression that we have from other countries is that the, the latest variants are not as severe in disease as we saw in the early stages of the pandemic. Right. Do you think China was ready to uplift its stringent COVID-19 policies? You know, I, I, you know, lifting the restrictions suddenly without putting into place other means is obviously a problem. The real main tool that we have for controlling pandemics is, is vaccination. There's no other good tool. Everything else will be temporary and easily bypassed. So this has to be a major immunization campaign with a good vaccine. So that, I think that the world has to cooperate very carefully with China to make sure that their population is vaccinated or immunized. You spoke about immunization. In your opinion, uh, would access to different vaccines make a difference for China's population at this point? Well, we have information on the vaccine from China that's been published, which seems to be reasonably good. But the vaccines that have been used in most of the Western countries seem to be somewhat better in their effectiveness uh, in terms of preventing at least severe disease. So I think that, again, uh, it would be the in, in the interest of everyone for uh, everyone to cooperate with China to make sure that they have access to the best vaccines available. Rana, despite a surge in cases in China, China has clearly said that all is well and the situation is under control. But experts now warn that the rising COVID-19 cases could create a potential breeding ground for new variants. How do you assess these contrasting statements? 
Yeah, this is always a, a, a fear that we have when viruses spread widely, they can mutate. And this is a virus that we know mutates. I think we need to put it into the perspective of the population of China. China's population of like one and a half billion is a very large population. So a million cases in China actually doesn't translate to a very high percentage of the population being infected. So the question really is how wide is the spread of the disease in China and uh, to what extent there will be any kind of virus. Right. My last question to you. How concerning do you think this surge is in COVID cases, not just for those in China, but also for countries across the globe? We saw that few countries have already imposed travel restrictions for Chinese travelers. Well, I personally don't really believe that travel restrictions are very effective because it's very easy to bypass them. I mean, we, they be, may be checking people coming in from China, but people coming from China could be coming from China. So again, uh, you can have limited success in slowing the spread with uh, some of these travel restrictions, and I think it's they're quite limited. But again, I keep stressing, and this is true for any of our uh, vaccine-preventable diseases, that we need to vaccinate. Uh, travel restrictions is a very limited one. Using documentation of vaccination is a much better way of actually controlling the pandemic. Thank you, Professor, for joining us on this hour and sharing your insights on this. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.